this first exercise that we're going to do, instead of exploring those custom calculation files, which can get pretty intricate very quickly, we are going to create our own custom calculation file first. So I can give you an overall example of some of the capabilities of what the custom calculator can do. For this demonstration, our custom calculation file is going to do two things. I want it to first show me the area percent of each one of my integrated peaks. So I can see what that area percent is in a column in my result table. Second, I have a USB resolution that's been handed down through my SOP for my QA, QC folks that says that my SOP resolution must be greater than 13. If it is not greater than 13, then I have failed that specification. So not only do I want it to calculate what that USP resolution is, I don't want to have to remember what the specification was set by my QAQC folks and my SOP. So I am going to create a custom calculation file that will tell me that if the USP resolution is greater than 13, then it was going to mark a pass in the column of my result table. If it is less than 13, it is going to mark a fail in that column. So it gives me an opportunity to add some logic to this so that I can start using the computer as, it, as the tool it was meant to be, rather than having me be a slave to my memory of trying to remember, well, in this particular assay, the USB resolution is 13, and in another assay, it's 20. I don't want to have to remember that. My brain remembers enough as it is, so I want to use the computer as a tool. The very first thing that we're going to want to do when the custom calculator is open, in the upper ribbon, select the very first icon, which is the plus, and then immediately below that, it says new file. Click on that. It creates a CC file number nine as the last CC file or custom calculation file on the left-hand panel. On the right-hand panel, we are presented with the editor first and then properties immediately below that. So first of all, we can put in a description for this custom calculation file. You can put in whatever description you'd like. I'm just going to put mine in as my 0126-2021 demo CC file. Now, I'm going to explain what a constants file is down below, but I am, we're not actually going to use it because it's used by a fairly small uh, subset of most of my customers that are out in the market. And specifically, it's, it's used mostly by my um, petrochemical folks, mostly petrochemical, sometimes chemical. And I'll give you the example of what they typically use it for. Every six months, there is a list of about 50 different known compounds in the petrochemical world. Methanol, ethanol, um, uh, hex hexagonal, a, and a whole variety of other ones, about 50 of them. Each one of those, every six months, has a different fudge factor, if you will, that needs to be used in the industry in order to be able to calculate the final concentration of each one of those subsets of a petroleum product. So in the petrochemical world, they create a file, a text file, that has a list of all 50 of these named compounds. Then immediately to the right of that list, there is a numerical value that corresponds to this six months portion of what that fudge factor is. Now, every six months, it might only change by just a fraction of a couple of those numbers. So what they do is they create this constants file, and then they go through every six months and just change those um, numerical values to correspond to the newest updated six-month calculations. They then use that constants file in a calculation of final concentration for each one of those named compounds. Now, I come from the pharma world. In the pharma world, a constants file is typically not used because they want to make sure that they maintain all of the traceability in their set of data. Now, there are some of my uh, pharmaceutical customers and some of my chemical customers, et cetera, that do use a constants file. But again, this is a very small subset of most of my customers, so I don't spend a lot of time here. I simply want to explain that to you. Next, immediately to the right of the properties tab, there is a formulas tab. I want you to select that formulas tab. 
And in that formulas tab, we now have on the right hand panel, three separate windows. There is an overview window first, there is a formula window in the middle section, and then there's a details window down below that's actually subdivided into essentially three more windows or three columns in that lower window. We're gonna go through all of these as we create our custom calculation. So the first thing that I wanna do here with creating this new file <clears throat> is I need to add a custom calculation. So in the upper ribbon, the second to last icon and the last icon that's actually available that's not grayed out says add CC. Click on that add CC. A new line will appear in the overview window on the right hand panel. And it says position number one. Now the first thing there is is an identifier and it says CC1. This identifier is what you are going to use to be able to identify this field in another use scenario. So let's say I want to not only create this field and do calculations, but I also want to incorporate this field into an intelligent reporting template later. Now, if I just leave it named CC1, I'm going to have to remember what CC1 corresponds to because that's going to be what I see in my intelligent reporter. Instead, I typically like to rename this something that would be beneficial for me to, to trigger my memory as to what this file actually is. So if you double click that CC1, it highlights the CC1 in that field. And I am going to type in area, P-E-R-C, area percent. Now notice if I attempt instead to in, not put in just alpha or numeric characters and instead want to put in the percent sign, I'm going to get a red flag and that entire uh, row is going to be red flagged. And the reason is because an identifier here is something that's tagged to the database that's on the back end. So I can only use alphanumeric characters. I can't use any special characters like that percent sign because a percent sign in database speak means start some type of a calculation. That doesn't make sense when we're trying to do a custom calculation here, but this is the name of the custom calculation. So instead, I'm going to again just label this area P-E-R-C, so I'm not going to get that error, and that will flag my memory when I go to use it in the intelligent reporter. Oh, that's right, I'm doing area percent for that particular custom calculation. Next, go to the display name field, click inside of that or double click inside of that. The cursor becomes available inside there. I can now put in a display name. Now this display name can contain whatever custom symbols or things you want it to because it's just a name. So I'm going to put in area, space, and the percent sign. And notice here in the display name, it doesn't give me that red error because it's actually not being asked in the database to do anything. This is just a text field to label something. Immediately to the right of that, there is a visible tab and it's currently checked. Now your next logical question might be, when would I want something to be invisible in a calculation? Well, Let's say that I am doing a calculation on a set of data that contains both calibration standards and unknown samples. But I want the calculation to be done on only unknown samples. It doesn't make sense to do them on my calibrators. So my very first line in my custom calculator could be to query my data and only show me unknown samples. Don't show me my calibrators. But I don't necessarily need to see that in my custom calculation file. So I can put that in as an instruction in the custom calculator, deselect that visible check mark, and now it will use that as a filter for my data, but the next line will be the first one that I actually see, which is probably the calculation on those unknown samples. Immediately to the right of that, there is a scope or for the, um, for the set of data, and if you highlight or hover over that field immediately below the scope, a downward facing arrow appears, and I can click on that downward facing arrow, and I can see that there are actually four separate scopes that are available within the custom calculation. 
Now, what exactly is a scope? Well, a scope is where exactly do I want to look for the data that I am going to do this calculation on? And you can think of this very much as an onion, and you're peeling away the layers of the onion. At the lowest level, there is a peak or group. That's in your chromatogram. You have a peak or a group set of data. If I go one layer up on that onion, it is on my signal level. What, am I, what do I want to look at? Then the next layer up would be on my injection layer. What would I like to be able to look at across all of my injections? And then finally, at the sequence level, what things do I want to be able to calculate uh, things on on the sequence level? Now, we will look at examples of all four of these layers it, when we look at some of the demonstration or one of the demonstration custom calculations that Agilent gives you out of the box. For this particular example, we are going to keep the scope at the lowest level, which is the peak or group. Then we have the type here that is set currently to double, but if I use that pull-down menu again, it will show me that I have options of integer, double, boolean, or string. 